Welcome to the book studio. I'm your host, Beth Ann Patrick, and today I'm honored and delighted to be here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the author of The Pluto Files, The Rise and Fall of America's Favorite Planet. Neil, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. i really delighted. You caused quite a cultural stir with um, some decisions you made about a certain planet, and just yesterday I was- A certain planet. <laughs> a certain body. A certain <laughs> <laughs> I was just reading um, a, a new book by um, Oprah Magazine columnist Lisa Kogan, and she said she has angst about Pluto. She feels like other planets are gonna be taken away. And so, did you have any idea when this whole thing started that there was gonna be such a kerfuffle? It crossed my mind only briefly. We're now on the 10th anniversary of our decision back in mm -hmm. New York to mount an exhibit that at the Rose Center for Earth and Space and in that new facility 230 million dollar facility we had the occasion to rethink how we would present the universe to the visiting public and when it came to the solar system we saw that there were new objects being discovered in the outer mm -hmm. solar system that kind of looked like Pluto and had orbits like Pluto and made of the same stuff as Pluto and we said well maybe Pluto isn't the ninth among planets, maybe it's the first among a whole new class. Oh, objects. it's all in ha in the context uh, it's, here. It's well, no, it, <laughs> it relates to newly discovered advancing frontiers. And so we said, let's present it that way. And I expected there might have been a little bit of fuss within the first couple of weeks, but there w I got one letter from an angry kid. That was it. Mm -hmm. It would take a whole year before the New York Times would discover what we had done and then made it a page one story. That's the orbit then, you know, the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> Earth orbit, <laughs> it needed that vibe, you know, that Earth vibe. So, so, so their headline, Pluto not a planet, only in New York. It was, it was, that planet I think ignited flames, not just fanned pre-existing flames. That one took gasoline and lit it. And, and lit it. That's right. You know, and the thing is, you have known from an early age, I know I read your memoir, The Sky is Not the Limit, that the space, the skies, the cosmos, these are awesome to humans. Completely. A and let's talk about some of your... I think if you don't think they're awesome, we, you should get checked out. I, think, <laughs> right? I, I used to think I was biased. It's like, no, I am not biased. The universe is awesome. The Please, universe is awesome. Now, yeah. how? what was the earliest experience that you have in your memory that relates to your career now? I was nine years old, mm -hmm. a first family visit to the local planetarium, the Hayden Planetarium Excellent, in New York best. City. <laughs> and there's also a Hayden Planetarium in Boston. It's uh, the Big Apple has the best. We got, we have our, <laughs> theirs is the Charles Hayden Planetarium. <laughs> we got Hayden, Hayden. And the, you go in there, you know, born in New York City, you don't, there's no sky in New York City. There's no. <laughs> You don't have a relationship with the cosmos if you grow up. Or the up. outdoors. Or the outdoors. <laughs> There's no outdoors. It's buildings and sidewalk and an occasional tree. <laughs> you want to, why is there a tree in the middle of the street? Get rid of it. You, know, you just don't think about plant life the way others do, uh, or the night sky even. Mm -hmm. And so it took a first visit to the Hayden Planetarium. They dim the lights and the stars come out. There it was. Uh, in fact, I think the universe called me. I think I had no choice in the matter. All right, well that brings me to another question. Do you believe in God? It depends on what kind, I mean, there are thousands of gods listed throughout the history of the world. Is there one in particular you're referencing? <laughs> well, I'm do just you, saying, you know, right? I, 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 There are some things out there that say Neil deGrasse Tyson, atheist, and I'm just wondering if you consider yourself someone who believes in that calling because you say the universe called to you. Yeah, the universe called to me. Uh, I, I'm widely claimed by atheists, which I find <laughs> Fascinating, because I've never said I was an atheist. Really? Or, Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I'm, if you would find a word that more closely describes what I am, I would say it's agnostic. Mm -hmm. And but I'm claimed by atheists. So I'm just intrigued by that. That's an interesting. So fact. you do you do feel there is something out there? No, no. I uh? feel that <laughs> I've yet to be convinced mm -hmm. that there is something there. But what called to you then? The universe. Oh, you mean what in the universe called? Yeah. Oh, my fascination with whatever it would take in my life to figure out how it all works. <laughs> excellent, what, excellent, good but, answer. But was there some <laughs> bearded man in the sky? No, no, I just, <laughs> there was a, Neil, this is God, you know, <laughs> study the universe. No, that's not what I mean when I say I was called by the universe. I was being a little more figurative <laughs> about that. Uh, but there are, when I look at the universe, I do ask, get, but in all seriousness, yeah. I do get asked that a lot. Of course. Do, and, and most people's, understanding of God is one who is beneficent and benevolent and a, a 
good deed doer, this sort of thing. And when I look at the universe, the universe doesn't reflect this. The universe is cold and dark and dangerous. Most places in the universe, you'd be dead within seconds if we put you there. The universe <laughs> is hostile to biology. It is not a friend to biology. But it's still biology. so interesting that you use that, that phrase, the universe called to me. It's very human. I th well, I feel the universe. I feel it. So, and I'm human, so I guess, hence. <laughs> well, and, you know, and, and sp speaking of human, there are tons of wonderful pop culture references in here. And there's a in, lot. In here? In, in oh, the book, oh, yes, in yes. In your oh, book. By all means. In your book, in oh, yes. The Pluto Files by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, in the, well, I feel I'm, I'm, I live in, in culture. You, you don't live apart from culture. You live within it. And it, it all depends on how much of it you embrace. Well, and what I'm wondering is, you know, you talk about Mickey Mouse and Pluto, of course. And what do you think is it? Mickey's dog. Mickey's dog. Mickey Mouse and his dog, Pluto. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just not speaking with well, enough just clarity. Mickey and Pluto could be Mickey and the planet. I'm just, you no, know, or the no, no. object formerly known as a well, planet. But Pluto, yeah. Mickey, Mickey Mouse's cartoon dog, is named after what people knew as a planet. There's no Pluto. written audit trail of that, but if you ask executives at Disney, that's what they'll tell that's you. That's what they'll tell you. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is why we get so attached to the planets and why we get so attached to those particular bodies out there in space. Is it because it makes us feel like there's some kind of order? No, I think in America, we're most. that's why the subtitle of the book is The Rise and Fall of America's Favorite Planet. Uh -huh. In my homework on this, I realized that in America, we have this, this explicit, if not subliminal, attachment to this cuddly, lovable bloodhound named Pluto, who doesn't speak, mm -hmm. who walks on all fours, unlike Goofy, right? <laughs> so as a result, you get to impart more of what you need Pluto to be to you on that character, because it doesn't have a spoken personality. Pluto has a whole... I mean, uh, uh, Goofy has a whole character to him. You either like him or you don't. Pluto just wants to lick your face. He how, just wants to be loved. How can that? He just wants to be loved. Yeah, but, but, and that, put, that creates a nice warm, fuzzy feeling. And I look in the universe, how many objects out there have cartoon characters named after him? I can count one. But Neil, don't you think it's more than Pluto? I mean, I know this is all about... Do I see people rallying for Mars or Mercury? <laughs> I don't think so. If well, we were going to demote Uranus, do you think there'd be a Uranus movement? Uh, the, that one, maybe not, but Mars. I think people would be very upset to find out that Mars wasn't a planet. Perhaps because Mars exists more deeply in our culture because exactly. there have been legends about it and and Martian alien books and have been written. attempts to get there and, you know, the connection to the god of war. Exactly. So Mars works a little more deeply in our culture than the other planets. So, yeah. but uh, otherwise, I think Pluto stands, and in America, we like the underdog, <laughs> pun intended here. Pluto's the littlest, it's the last one, it's the coldest, it's the, and it's, and in America, when a little one wins, you, you cheer it harder. E you, exactly. You, you support it all the more because it was the, it was the little engine that could. Well, what's your next goal? What are you going to knock We're going to demote slate? Earth. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that. They, because they get very serious. They say, are, what are you, the astrophysicist, going to do next? We need a new sun. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it going to be? What what's, what's comes next from Neil deGrasse Tyson? Uh, you mean in life? or In, in life, in, in letters, in projects? Well, I have several projects. Some are, are still a little... They're not public yet, because mm -hmm. I'm still making them work in my head. And okay. before I go public with them, I want to make sure they're better shaped and better formed. Otherwise, people start coming at you. You know, when is it ready? Why are you doing it? You've what? been and there. You've been yeah, yeah. So I just, I, you know, <laughs> give me a little while. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. And what about space exploration in general and mm -hmm. education? You know, we had Buzz Aldrin on the show a few months Excellent. back, and it was really I love fun. Buzz. And uh, you got to, you got to give the. Did man he tell you he's going to be on Dances with Stars? Did he tell you? That? I heard about That's that. Right. I am looking forward. But I don't think he knows how to do the moonwalk. I'm going to have to teach him that. You, you, there you go. Yeah. See, I can moonwalk. This I'm, is a meeting I'm, of mine. I moonwalk like a week after Michael Jackson. Did it, so. <laughs> I'm good for that. <laughs> Excellent. You read your staff? I'll, tell I'll teach your staff too. <laughs> and the staff, we'll, we'll do a special video just for that. <laughs> but, you know, he has such a great um, thing going for educating young people about space. Because I think even though we're all awed by it, sometimes we forget that we need to keep studying it. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I don't forget. We, no, we, not we, you. We I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Me? Dr. Tyson does not forget. I don't forget. <laughs> I go out and I look up. Every time I walk out of a building, I look up. Okay, what, you step in things every now and then, but if yeah. you always look up, <laughs> the frontier of the universe is, you confront it every time you go out there and look up, and that's what 
not enough people do that. We need to remember that. And the book right now is The Pluto Files, The Rise and Fall of America's Favorite Planet. It's by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And Neil, thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Join us next time on The Book Studio.